Okay, so um, today we're diving into a world that's, well, let's just say it's not for the faint of heart. Yeah, you could say that again. We're talking medical coding. Yeah. More specifically. Oh, you know it. We're tackling those MRSA codes, the ones that can make even seasoned coders sweat a little. Exactly. But don't worry. We're going to break it down, make it as painless as possible. And speaking of making things easier, there's a link to a super helpful resource, the Absolute Medical Coding Institute's MCG Manual down in the episode description. Absolutely. Can't live without that MCG manual when it comes to this stuff. Seriously. Now, I think everyone has at least heard of MRSA, you know, that superbug that's resistant to a lot of antibiotics. Right. It's a big deal, especially in healthcare settings. For sure. And when it comes to coding for MRSA, things can get pretty complex. Like, even seemingly simple terms colonization versus infection. Oh, yeah, those two can trip people up for sure. I mean, what happens when a patient has both? How do you code that accurately? Well, that's exactly what we're going to unpack today. We're going to decode those MRSA codes, make sure you're not leaving any important details out, and that you're capturing the full picture of what's going on with the patient. It's like being a medical detective, but with code books instead of magnifying glasses. Haha, <laughs> I like that. So let's say you're a coder, and you're looking at a patient's chart, and you see... MRSA pneumonia. Okay. Seems pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. I mean, MRSA, pneumonia. You just use the codes for each, wouldn't you? Ah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? But that's where those tricky combination codes come in. Combination codes? Yeah, think of them like shortcuts. They bundle the infection and the bug all in one code. Oh, okay, I see. So instead of having a separate code for pneumonia and a separate code for MRSA, you just... Um. One code does the trick. Like, in the case of MRSA pneumonia, you'd use J15.212. J15.21L, got it. That's way more efficient. But um, what about those times when there isn't a combination code for a specific MRSA infection? Like, what do you do then? Great question. That's when you got to break it down. So you'd code the infection itself, let's say a wound infection, right? And then you add a separate code specifically for the MRSA. Oh, okay. So you're essentially saying, hey, this infection, it's not just any old infection. It's caused by MRSA. Exactly. And the code for MRSA is B95.62. Just tack that onto the infection code and you're good to go. Makes sense. Okay. So this might sound like a dumb question, but uh. wouldn't you also need to add a code for penicillin resistance? Since MRSA is, well, resistant to penicillin. Ah, I see where you're coming from. You're thinking like a coder already. But here's the thing. That MRSA code, the B95.62, yeah. it already implies penicillin resistance. Oh, so it's like built in. Exactly. It's redundant to add another code for it. Kind of like saying ATM machine. The M already stands for machine, you know? Right, right. <laughs> no redundancy in the coding world. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about infections. But what about that other tricky term, colonization? Help me out here. What exactly does that mean in the context of MRSA? So colonization means that the bacteria, in this case MRSA, is present, but it's not actually causing any harm. You know, it's just kind of hanging out. So like that roommate who never pays rent, but also never throws wild parties and trashes the place. Uh-huh. Perfect analogy. So if you see MRSA screen positive in a chart. Yep, that's usually a sign of colonization. And the code for that is Z22.322. Yeah. But why even code for it if it's not causing an infection? Well, it's all about the bigger picture, right? Coding colonization helps track potential outbreaks. Okay, like if there's a sudden increase in colonization, you know something might be up. Exactly. And it can also influence infection control measures. Like if you know a patient is colonized with MRSA, you might take extra precautions like using specific types of PPE or isolating them. To prevent it from spreading. And protect both the patients and the healthcare workers, right? Exactly. Makes sense. Yeah. So it's like a warning sign. Hey, this person could potentially develop an infection. Let's be extra careful. Yeah. Okay, but what about that scenario we touched on earlier? What happens if a patient has both colonization and D, an active MRSA infection? Good question. And this is where it gets really important to code accurately. In this case, you'd code for both. Both. Yep. You'd use the Z22.322 for colonization. Right. And then you'd use the appropriate code for the specific MRSA infection they have. Oh, so you're painting a complete picture of their situation. Exactly. You're saying, look, this person has the potential for trouble. Andy, trouble's already here. Wow. I'm starting to see why medical coding is so crucial. It's not just about numbers. It's about telling a story with those codes. You got it. It's about communicating information clearly and accurately so that everyone involved in the patient's care is on the same page. Okay, so before we wrap up, what are some of the key takeaways you want our listeners to remember about MRSA coding? 
Well, first and foremost, remember that MRSA coding has its own unique rules. You can't just apply general coding principles and hope for the best. Right. It's its own little world within the coding universe. Exactly. Second, that distinction between colonization and infection, it's crucial. Make sure you understand the difference in code accordingly. Okay, got it. And lastly. When in doubt, always, always refer back to the MCG manual. Ah, uh, yes, our trusty guide through the coding jungle. Well, hopefully everyone's feeling a little more confident about those MRSA codes now. I hope so too. And before we go, I want to leave everyone with a thought to ponder. Think about how much impact these codes actually have. They influence patient care, they drive research, they even play a role in insurance reimbursements. It's true, it's all connected. It's a reminder that in medical coding, accuracy isn't just about getting it right, it's about making a real difference. So be sure to check out the MCG manual for all the details you'll find the link in the episode description. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the world of MRSA coding. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure.